good evening, or good morning, or good whatever time it is that you happen to be watching this video. Good 2 a.m. and you stayed up all night watching How I Met Your Mother and maybe some random YouTube videos and you found this channel. We're glad to have you. Today we're going to be going over how Twilight Imperium blatantly stole quite a bit from the hit sci-fi setting of Dune. Now when I say blatantly stole, I of course do mean blatantly stole. Now, was it wrong? Not necessarily. A lot of these things could fall under the umbrella of homage. But to pretend as though Twilight Imperium does not burrow heavily from the Dune saga would be foolish. This video has been a long time coming. I've been working my way through the Dune series. Um, that's actually why I haven't had time to finish whoop, my war son, The Fractured Void. But it's getting there. We're getting to it. Promise. Book review will be out soon. Once I get through, you know, the series. Uh, I'm currently on the third book, God Emperor of Dune. I won't spoil anything here. Um, maybe some general themes, but nothing that if you have read the first book or even just seen the movie, you wouldn't already know. But I wanted to have the background information so that I could make a good and informed video. All right, so Twilight Imperium and Dune. Let's talk about the similarities. This isn't gonna be some kind of versus video. It's like, which setting would win? Maybe we'll do one of those at some point. Right now, I've got my hands full with that Warhammer video, so none of that yet. For right now, let's just talk about the common themes, common motifs, straight up just lifted content that TI took from Dune. And, you know, have a little bit of fun while we do so. First off, let's just do the basics. Let's just hit the individual things that are obvious and anybody who even has a passing knowledge of the two settings would immediately notice. Um, the most glaring and blatant and obvious thing is definitely the barony of the Letnev. Um, so there's a bunch of pale, treacherous, conniving people who their entire structure and uh, their entire society is structured around treachery and betrayal and warfare. And um, they are, as I said, pale. They live under the ground in a rogue planet called Ark Prime. Um, this is clearly almost a one for one rip of the Baron Harkonnen and the Harkonnens of the Dune setting. Both live on rogue planets, both live underground, both are portrayed with pale skin. I mean, that's kind of... I, I can't remember if that's in the source material of Dune or not, but, I mean, if you watch the Denis Villeneuve movie, you saw... Um, so no, not Soren. Uh, Stellan Skarsgård? I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, but you saw him portraying the Baron Harkonnen, and he's white, like, just white as a sheet. So, it's, it's, it's a very clear thing. So, pale, conniving, tricksy... Um, I, th I thought maybe that this was just introduced in Rex, which is the, it's literally the Twilight Imperium Dune crossbreed. But um, no, the Barony of Letnev has always been the Barony of Letnev, and it's always had pale people who lived on a rogue planet, and they've always been treacherous. So no, it's, it's just the Harkonnens. The Baron Barony of Letnev is just the Harkonnens by another name. Um, another interesting parallel and another, they're just this, but by the same name, is the Sardak Noor. The Sardak Noor. The Sardakar. The Sardak Noor. The Sardakar. I mean, it's not even really trying. Um, Quinara, the Sardak Noor home planet, is basically Seleucus Secundus before we came up with Hope's End for the Twilight Imperium setting. Um, for those of you who don't know, Hope's End, uh, I mean, actually, for those of you who don't know, Seleucus Secundus is where the Sardaukar, the shock troops, the hardened, battle-worn veterans of the Imperium in Dune, they're trained on Seleucus Secundus, and the Sardak... I don't remember how this sentence began. But, Seleucus Secundus is this crazy planet. Um, from the Dune Wiki, it's described as a harsh place with many wild beasts, extreme temperatures, and difficult terrain. And um, we basically... So... 
when TI was in its infancy, as in first edition and early second edition, um, Quinara sort of served as the Seleucus Secundus of the Sardak Null. I mean, sorry, the Sardakar. I mean, the Sardak Null. I mean, I'm not even sure because they're literally the same word. So Quinara is this massive desert planet and it's described as super inhospitable and basically can't support life. And as a result, these ferocious bug monsters that form an intelligent civilization, well, they, they just developed on Quinara and, you know, now they're a galactic superpower. Well, that worked for, you know, one and a half editions, but then the edition, um, Twilight Imperium Hope's End came out, an expansion on second edition. Actually, was that an expansion on first edition? I don't know. It was an expansion. So whatever. Hope's End came out. And Hope's End was this planet that um, basically it's just Seleucus Secundus with a rename. I mean, Hope's End is described as um, the famous training ground of elite Lazanax troops. Only the strong survive here. Um, it's got toxic wildlife, fierce aurora storms, and volatile weapons caches hidden beneath its sands. So it's a desert planet with crazy weather and toxic wildlife. It's Seleucus Secundus. Like, come on, come on, come on. All right, so just getting that one out of the way. Hope send is Seleucus Secundus, the Sardak Noor, the Sardakar, and the Baron of Letnev is the barony of Harkonnen. I mean, the Harkonnen... You understand. Then there's some things that, you know, TI borrows, but they're vague enough that it's not just a direct rip. And honestly, I mean, Warhammer 40k does kind of the same thing where, you know, it's the Imperium, it's a galactic empire. That was, that was Dune that came up with that. And, you know, well, came up with that. I mean, you know, who can really say who came up with the Galactic Empire? But Dune is the one that popularized it, and then Warhammer stole it, and Twilight Imperium stole it as well. It's fine. That's what that's how fiction is written and how fantasies are made. So yeah, there's an Imperium, a Twilight Imperium, or a Imper I don't actually I think it's just called the Imperium in Dune. Uh, both of the settings have galactic councils, although the Dune one is called the Landsrod, and that is way cooler of a name than Galactic Council. So, um, effective immediately, we all have to just start calling the Galactic Council the Landsrod. Uh, sorry, Dane, had to go over your head on this one, but yeah, way cooler name. We're just going to steal that like we stole everything else. So, Galactic Council Landsrod. Um, it goes deeper. In the Prophecy of Kings expansion, in fact, uh, the story talks about how the Mahakt, when they were fleeing before the Lazaks, they sowed superstition and myths into primitive cultures throughout the galaxy about this promised planet of Ixth. And people wanted to find it, thinking it was a paradise, and it was actually the Mahawk's prison. Um, this is very, very, very similar. And Dane even admitted this, which is totally fine. Again, this is how fiction is written. Like, people make homages. People make, people straight up copy things, but change details so that it's a cool story that is integrated into their setting. So, um, that's just the missionary pre pro protectiva from Dune. For those of you who don't know Dune, uh, there's these witches, I guess. There's the, there's this witch nunnery, whatever. There's the Bene Gesserit. Look it up. Uh, there's there's the Bene Gesserit, and um, they have they have various different branches. But one of the branches is the missionary pre protectiva, which their entire goal is to sow superstition into primitive cultures developing on planets, so that if sisters of the Bene Gesserit end up there, they can use these superstitions in order to survive. And it also, you know, it, it, Dune gets trippy the longer you read it, so it, yeah, it'll be, it'll make sense. I'm not spoiling anything. So, the Missionary Protectiva, very cool. Uh, we copied it for the Legend of Ixth. I think it's, I think we did it better, honestly, in TI, like, eat your heart out, Frank Herbert. Um, right? Yeah, Frank. I always think it's like Dennis Herbert or Miller Herbert or something. I don't know. But I think we did it better. I think making it a twist that it's this prison planet is very cool. Although it's, you know, it's less nuanced and deep. So take it as you will. I'm just realizing I don't think I've got the storage on this camera to finish this video. So ad break. And we're back. Um, sorry about that. Hope you didn't go anywhere. But... Where was I? I was thinking about how I don't have any storage on my camera. 
And oh, missionary protectiva. Uh, hold on, my computer actually logged out, so that's fun. Oh, let's get my notes back. Missionary protectiva. We talked to talk about hope sending Seleucus Secundus. Oh yes, of course, Rex. The final days of an empire. So this board game is actually this board game, but using this board game's theme. So this board game is this board game using this board game. If that makes sense, I'm glad. Um, functionally, what happened was this is a classic board game from like probably the 80s, I think. And um, Fantasy Flight acquired the rights to create it, but they couldn't get the rights to the Dune universe. So they reskinned it with the Twilight Imperium universe. And in so doing, they kind of called attention to the fact that, as we were discussing before, Twilight Imperium sort of ripped a whole lot of things from Dune. What they did was they assigned different factions in the Dune board game Twilight Imperium counterparts. So, for instance, in this game, the Fremen are portrayed by the Federation of Sol, because the Federation of Sol, during the fall of Mechatol, would know when the orbital bombardments were happening, and so they basically are immune to the bombardments. Not, it, it, it doesn't matter. Just like the Fremen in Dune are immune to the storm that patrols the board, wiping out armies. So, that law-wise, that doesn't really make much sense. I mean, the Federation of Soul doesn't have very much in common with the Fremen. Um, but, a couple of other interesting par parallels were drawn. For instance, um, the Hakan sort of do, in the Twilight Imperium universe, function like the Spacing Guild. Now, in TI, there is no monopoly on space travel, like there is in the Dune universe. In Dune, because... You have to be prescient in order to properly travel through space in order to avoid obstacles. There are, is a group called the Spacing Guild that has a monopoly on interstellar travel. Well, Khan have a monopoly on trade in the Twilight Imperium universe. Not entirely, but for all intents and purposes, if you're shipping something in TI, it generally goes through a Khan freighters. So, we, could, we can definitely see how there's, you know, connections there. Now, these are tenuous. Honestly, I kind of, you know, fired off the big ones at the beginning of this video with the Barony of Letnev and the Sardak Nor. Hakan is more of a tenuous connection, I will grant you. Um, as is the Extra, who make an appearance in Rex. Um, they are the Bene Gesserit. They win by predicting who is going to win and in what round. And... They are more diplomatic, working behind the scenes rather than outright. Now, these are more just tropes rather than straight lifts from Dune. So, I think we should probably avoid, you know, that kind of thing. And that's, that feels like stretching, you know? So instead, let's talk about the main theme of Dune and TI, all right? I've been wanting to do a video on what this moral of the story is for the Twilight Imperium universe. What, is, what are the ideas? What are the themes that are being explored? Um, for those of you who haven't read Dune, I, this is not going to be spoilery. Um, it's going to be just an overview of a main theme. But if you are just totally averse and you are afraid of getting spoiled on a book that's been out for, I think, 40 or 50 years now, click off this video. But both Twilight Imperium and Dune focus on this concept called anacyclosis. The cycle of nations. So, a lot of you have probably seen the meme or heard the phrase, um, good times make weak men, weak men make hard times, hard times make strong men, and then strong men make good times. This is a simplification of that concept of anacyclosis that was talked about originally by the Greek th um, thinkers. And it's this idea that nations and empires and basically every human institution goes through these cycles where our success makes us complacent. And then once our complacency sets in, we become corrupt. And once we become corrupt, the systems that allow for that success in the first place break down. And then once that happens, the difficulties that arise form the people who will make the new structure. So it's a constant cycle of rebirth and renewal, but also destruction and decay. Now, Twilight Imperium, for those of you who are familiar with the law, and if you aren't, go watch my law series and familiarize yourself and then come back and finish this video. Um, for those of you who are aware, it basically models exactly that. So in the beginning, 
God created the heavens and the earth, but no, it's it's in the beginning there was the Mahakt kings, this mad genocidal race ripping the galaxy apart in war. Those are the initial hard times. Now, within that those hard times, in that fire, the Lazaks arise as the strong men. They're dynamic, they're powerful. I mean, one of them defeats two Mahakt in single combat. I mean, it's it's mind-blowing. The, the Lazaks are incredible, and they conquer the galaxy and push the Mahakt back into the darkness. Now, that's order overcoming chaos. That's, that's strong men establishing those good times. Those good times last for 30 millennia in Twilight Imperium as the Lazaks Empire reaches its zenith, and then it begins to decay as it becomes bloated and bu bureaucratic and corrupt. And... Right around the time of the, that's the Age of Dusk, right around the time of the Quan Incident and everything, we hit the absolute point of no return, the, the strong men have failed to maintain the system, and now weak men have seized the reins of power, and that's Salai Sai Korian, that's the, that's the Lazak's elite, and that's, the, that's the, um, the great races as well that are tearing this empire apart. Honestly, I'm not going to need to make the themes of TI video if I keep talking like this. Although I still will because there's a bunch of other really interesting... It doesn't matter. Anyways. So yeah. We, we get to the corruption of the Lazaks. And then finally, that spark lights and the hard times begin. The twilight wars. The long night. This difficult age where everything is thrown into disarray and chaos. And all of the old systems break down. And then, the setting of this game is those great races, out of that darkness, these strong men, these leaders arise, and they begin to establish a new order. And yes, there's growing pains of the new custodial wars, but still. Now, that's, that's the anacyclosis of Twilight Imperium. Without spoiling too much of Dune, there's a very similar concept happening, but on a smaller scale, and over the series, a much larger scale. So over the series, you see that same sort of thing play out over a couple of generations. Not spoiling, not going to do it, but for those of you who are... You know what? All right, all right. I'm just going to spoil it. Click off the video if you... It's been out for 50 years. I, I'm not spoiling anything. All right, so Paul Atreides comes to power. He establishes his empire. He's the strong man coming out of the weak... So the old empire emperor is a weak man creates hard times, creates war, creates bloodshed. Paul Atreides rises out of that, formed by it, and is this messiah figure, and he comes and establishes his own empire. But his own empire is founded on this same bloodshed, this same cycle of violence, and so, inevitably, as the gentrification and the terraforming of Arrakis take place, as, as these hardy soldiers that form the backbone of the backbone of the empire are exposed to more civilizing um, tastes, they go soft. And as a result, the empire begins to crumble until stuff happens. And that I kind of don't want to spoil because a lot of people haven't read past the first two books. And so I, I recommend it. I mean, I've only read the next one, but it gets, it gets wacky and it gets psychedelic and weird. But I recommend that you give it a shot because, you know, it's cool and there's deep there's deep thoughts being explored here. Twilight Imperium kind of, you know, scratches the surface of them, but Dune really dives in. So it's it's a good series to read. Anyways, so we see this. Let, let's just take Arrakis as the example because it's easier to see. Arrakis starts out as this hostile desert planet and these ferocious Fremen live on it. Um, the, these men who live in the desert and... They are the best fighters in the galaxy because of how difficult their situation is. But when they finally, when the Fremen rush forth from Arrakis and conquer the entire galaxy, they begin to terraform Arrakis, Dune. And they put trees in water. And once that happens, their discipline becomes lax and they start to become weaker. Just like the Lazaks. As the Lazaks establish their empire, the Lazaks become weak because there's no longer the pressure from the hard times making them into good men. Same thing happens with the Fremen. They're no longer good fighters. And as a result, the empire grows weaker and weaker. And then finally, stuff happens, you know? I'm not, I don't, I don't want to go too far into it. 
All right, so you can kind of see that anticyclosis in both of these stories. You can see that cycle of nations, the, the, the Lazaks, the Atreides, kind of go through the same thing, you know? And it's this, it's a deep theme. I mean, the, the Greeks really spoke about it a lot. In fact, there's a famous quote that has to do, I mean, it's, it's from Cyrus the Great, uh, the founder of the Achaemenid Persian Empire, but it really resonates with the setting of Arrakis. And in a way, therefore, it resonates with Twilight Imperium, which it um, Cyrus, when he's approached by his generals, having established this globe-spanning empire, um, they say, all right, so now that we have all of this land, let's move our people into the best, most fertile, most bountiful part of our empire so that they can live good lives. And Cyrus says, no, because soft lands makes for soft men and hard lands make for hard men. It's this idea that your outside influences, they impact how you, who you are and how you hold yourself and how capable you can actually become. And it kind of happens in both of these settings. I mean, we've got Hope's End here, we've got Arrakis here, we've got the Lazaks, we've got the Atreides. We have this cycle of anticyclosis, the cycle of nations. And I think that that's the main theme of both of the stories. And so that's a really cool similarity. All right, I think I've, I think I've rambled on about Greek stuff and cycles long enough. There's one more little point I want to um, hit on. This is honestly, I don't think it's a stretch, but it's, it's more of a personal interpretation of the Twilight Imperium setting that I kind of read into. Um, in Dune, there was at one point computers and AI and machines that thought. There was robots, basically. And they rebelled, and through great per, um, difficulty, they were killed and overthrown and destroyed and... As a result, there's now an imposition on the people of the Imperium in Dune to not make any machine that thinks like a man. So you can't have, there's no computers in Dune. Uh, there's, a, there's a motorcycle, a helicopter or something. All right, anyways. I kind of get the same impression from TI. It's not outright stated any, at any point that we know of. I mean, there was the old robot rebellion, um, but that, like, that's defunct. It's not actually still canon. I think it should be, because it explains a lot about certain technologies that are missing from TI. For instance, AI just doesn't exist in the Twilight Imperium universe, at least not until Prophecy of Kings introduced it with AI development algorithms. And there's no robots. I mean, the Titans exist, but that's not really the same thing. There's cybernetics, but there's no, there's no thinking machines. And I think that the Butlerian Jihad, which is the uprising of the robots and their subsequent destruction in Dune, and the Robot Rebellion, which is the defunct law of Twilight Imperium, that's a that's a pretty stark, like a very similar thing. And um, fun facts, Warhammer 40k actually copied it too with the Men of Iron and that whole thing. So that, that's why there's very few computers in the Warhammer universe. So yeah, um... I don't know if there's anything there. I think there is personally, but it's up to you. Put your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this. It was more of a just me rambling and, you know, reading off some notes. It's going to be so nice to not have to edit together a slideshow and do all that stuff. Like, tell lo making lore videos is really easy because it's just an animated slideshow, but it's also really time consuming to edit things when you're not a very good editor. That's me. So, um... This is gonna be great. I'm really excited. I'm going to go and finish it like right now, especially because I already filmed this, so it should be done, but whatever. All right, all right. Um, Warhammer 40K video coming soon, very soon. I have the script done, I promise. It's probably gonna be like an hour. I'm not gonna overpromise though, so I'm not gonna say that, but it's very long and um, very awesome. And uh, book review will be coming at some point. There's gonna be more unboxings because all of my Kickstarters right now and um, I'm working on the SAR video, and that should be out by this weekend. All right. I'll talk to you later, you lovely people. Cheers!